Hi guys, really excited to share this video with you guys. Uh, we're speaking counter-attack and it's a real passion of mine as uh, most tries these days are scored from counter-attack or turnover attack. But for today, we'll just uh, concentrate on counter-attack. So one of the things is that after um, having a go and attacking for quite a few phases, it's important to try and kick on the front foot. If we kick on the front foot and we can find space, um, this puts the opposition under pressure to scramble back and then to exit with a kick. If this happens, we've got the perfect opportunity to create another platform to attack from. Now, with the kick chase becoming more important, it's important for our counter-attack to first of all have a full go. And we can do one of three things. We can move the ball to the middle. We can move the ball to the middle, step back and work back to the tram where the ball came from. Or we can move the ball right across to the other side of the field. So in doing this, we need to try and create that the defensive backs are all stacked towards one side of the field. If we can get this, then we've got a mismatch on the second phase. So now, as you can see from the video above, you'll have a designated guy, normally the six chasing hard to get to the ruck. Then you've got a few option runners, an option runner of nine, two option runners of 10, um, another option runner of 12, and then the rest of your players have been stacked on the opposite side. So one of the main points here is to move the ball away from the heavies towards the faster backs and now you've got the eight forwards defending the large part of the field. Clearly that uh, the number 13 ran a shocking uh, diagonal line across the field, ate up all the space created by a really good strategic counter attack and we were bundled into touch. So in this half time, we had a good chat and the second clip will show where the boys set up in the same guy and exactly the same uh, um, basically strategic counter-attack and they have a go and after having a go they will move the ball back you can see the same number 13 that ran skew in the first half now ran really straight but still didn't ship the ball and eventually uh, got it out to um, his uh, centre partner who made a great offload and the winger scored in the corner now one of the second options is to move the ball to the middle of the field, have a real go because generally that's where there is a vacuum between the forwards and the backs in the kick chase line. So especially the New Zealand teams do this really well, they move the ball to the middle of the field, then from that ensuing ruck if they don't break through, they will change direction or go same way depending on what the cues say and um, attack whatever side you can create the mismatches. Yeah, you can see our boys attacking the blind side, so change of direction. It was still a bit unorganized, we hadn't had the decoys and the option runners. But sometimes it happens so quickly that they've got to adjust on the fly. And uh, a great way, they created a lot of momentum and put Province under a lot of pressure in this specific clip. Guys, as a clip is playing and uh, you're having a recap on what's going on just one thing on the cues it's really important number one to always allow your players to have a full go on counter-attack don't let the structure override uh, natural ability then the second thing is once we do get the ball into this designated area make sure that the cues will determine where the players will be going to so you've got your decision makers if the defense is spread wide we have to go to the option runners through the middle if the defense is narrow like in the two clips we have to go out wide and make it count i hope you enjoyed the video uh hit like subscribe uh more stuff to follow look forward to chatting soon